everybody, it's Angie. Tonight I'm making kind of a variation on a Portuguese fish stew for dinner. So I thought I'd show you how to make it too. So why don't you join me and we'll get dinner going. So here are the ingredients that you'll need to make this. All right, so to start I have some turkey and dewy sausage. Um, these are pretty spicy. You can get linguiça or chorizo for this as well. Um, but today they only had the andouille in my store, so that's what I bought. Of course, I get the turkey so that it's a little bit leaner. This has, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 percent less fat than um, a beef or pork one would. So for this recipe, I'm probably going to use just um, half of these. So I'll take two and put the other half back in the fridge later. And then, you know, you just want to chop these. This is already pre-cooked, so you, it's not like you really have to cook it, but it leaves such nice flavor in the pan and adds such nice flavor to the broth. It's really great. All right, so I already have my pan heating, and I'm just going to put in a little bit of olive oil. And I have some pre-chopped onions from dinner that I made last night, so I just save those in a baggie when I chop up too many. So I'm just going to throw in the onions. I'm just going to let them cook for a minute. Okay, now on a cutting board over here, I have my fish. For this recipe, you could use um, cod or any white fish. This is hake. And I bought this today. It's a little bit thicker than cod, and I'm hoping it'll hold together a little bit better than cod. A lot of times, this will fall apart in the stew, and I kind of like it if it will hold together. So there's just a little bit of skin left on it. So I'm just going to portion this off into, I don't know, probably about four ounce pieces. And I'm just going to season the fish with a little bit of kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. And I'm also going to use some of this. This um, a friend of mine gets at the local farmer's market. It's a um, maple jerk spice rub. And I really like this on fish. Mmm, it smells so good. It's not really very mapley. It more just adds a little bit more spice to the dish. All right, now to the onions, I'm going to add a little garlic. Usually I chop my own, but I don't feel like it tonight. So I'm adding about two teaspoons of pre-chopped garlic right out of the jar. That stuff is great. And I'm also going to throw in at the same time on my andouille sausage. And this sausage, the andouille is much smokier than the linguiça or the chorizo, so this is going to add a nice smoky flavor to the dish. Alright. Now in a couple minutes we're going to need to deglaze this pan with some wine. So I have uh, my giant bottle of Cabot, and you know, I can't resist having a sip when I am cooking for my family, so I'm just going to pour, because I'm going to share this with the dinner, so I'm going to have a little, hmm. and the dinner's going to have a little. All right, in the meantime, I am just going to wash and chop the grape tomatoes, and I don't chop them all, I like to leave some of them whole. I'm just going to cut up maybe... I don't know, 10 or 20 of them. All right, so there's the tomatoes all set. I have half of them chopped in half and then just a few left whole. Okay, so now I'm going to take this stuff out of the pan and I'm just going to set it aside for a few minutes while I deglaze the pan. And then I'm going to, um, in the same pan, brown up the fish a little bit. So that, you got to turn the flame right up so it's nice and hot, and then you just pour in a little wine. And then that helps you kind of just scrape it, and you scrape up all the nice brown bits, and that is all the good stuff that makes the flavor in your dish. And then you just let it boil for a couple minutes till it's reduced by about half, and um, that burns off all the alcohol. Okay, so now I'm going to take this stuff out of the pan and I'm just going to set it aside for a few minutes while I deglaze the pan. 
And then I'm going to, um, in the same pan, brown up the fish a little bit. So that, you got to turn the flame right up so it's nice and hot. And then you just pour in a little wine. And then that helps you kind of just scrape it and you scrape up all the nice brown bits. And that is all the good stuff that makes the flavor in your dish. And then you just let it boil for a couple minutes till it's reduced by about half. And um, that burns off all the alcohol. And I'm just going to pour that right on top of those things. Okay, and now to brown up the fish, I'm just going to add some oil to the pan. So this is going to be a one pan meal, my favorite. So you're just going to add the fish. Nice hot pan. Scoop this one to the inside because it's so thick and put the thinner one to the outside. So after about five minutes, the fish will be ready to be turned. And while the fish is cooking, you can slice the bread. I have my assistant slicing the bread today. My lovely assistant. All right, so when the fish looks good, it should look almost opaque all the way through, but it doesn't have to be quite cooked through. So you're just going to remove that to a separate plate. Oh, yeah, these hold together way better than cod would have. Cod would have been falling apart all over the place already. So I'm glad I got this cake. All right, and now we're going to deglaze the pan again, but instead of using wine, this time we are going to use the um, clam juice. There you go. I have two bottles of clam juice. I'm just going to pour it right in there. Now, if your family, if you think clam juice is going to be too strong of a flavor, this is kind of like a fish broth, so it should be kind of fishy and salty. But if you think that's too strong of a flavor for your family, you could use one uh, bottle of clam juice and some chicken broth or some vegetable broth instead. All right, and then you're just going to scrape up all those nice brown bits. And again, my lovely assistant is helping. And um, my pans, I use ceramic coated pans because, um, you know, I'm worried about Teflon now. The more I read, the more I feel like I have to worry about everything in this world. So anyway, ceramic, I'm trying to find ceramic pans now, and they're great to cook with. You don't really need much oil, and it gives everything a nice, a nice brown, way better than Teflon, and things don't stick to it, but they don't really clean up very well. They always stay kind of dirty looking, um, even though they are clean and they're washed. So sorry if my pan's a little dirty looking, but it's the nature of ceramic cookware. So now um, I'm just going to bring this up to a nice bubble, bubble, a nice boil, and when that gets hot, we're going to throw the sausages back in, and then I also have a can of chickpeas that we're going to add, and we're also going to put in those tomatoes, and then we're just going to let that simmer for a couple minutes. Then I'm going to add the fish back in, and then it will be all ready. So I'm just going to have a little sip of this to see how um, salty it is. I always like extra pepper. Oh, well, because I mean, the like liquid's gonna burn off, but the salt probably isn't, so it's gonna get saltier. Right. All right. So let's throw in the chickpeas. Mmm, love chickpeas. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And the chickpeas. I'm talking from way over here. The chickpeas are a great source of fiber and protein. So if you want to have a salad on the side with this, you can, but you don't necessarily need to if you're going to eat a lot of the chickpeas because that can be your vegetable course for this meal. And also it has the tomatoes. So let's throw in the tomatoes. And then we're going to 
put the sausages and the wine and the garlic and onions back in. You could also make this with shallots if you didn't have onions, but I have onions, not shallots. And then you're going to give that a stir, bring it to a boil, um, and it really shouldn't come to a full rolling boil. It should just come up to like a nice simmer, so you have to watch it and then adjust your heat back down. Okay, so you can see that is coming up to a little boil. I threw in some dried parsley. Fresh parsley would be great, but I didn't happen to have any today. Even though I was at the grocery store today and could have easily gotten some, it slipped my mind, so I don't have any. So, you basically just want these tomatoes to get soft before you add the fish back in. So we're going to do a couple more minutes with this at just kind of a low simmer for the tomatoes to get a little softer. Okay, so now we're just going to add the fish back in here and let it all simmer for about five more minutes. And that's why the fish doesn't have to be 100% cooked through earlier. You don't want it to get overdone. And you want to sort of nestle it down into the broth. And it just needs to simmer for five more minutes and then dinner is ready. This is ready. I'm just going to test it with a little scrap of bread. A little scrap of bread. We're getting scrappy. Mm, mm pretty good. I guess we better read it. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.